I've been out on a random car spending spree again. I went out to get a Rover 600 and I came home with this. This hamster racing Rover 416 SLI. What on earth was I thinking? The SLI specification gets me a nice sunroof, it gets me electric front windows, central locking, power steering was optional and anti-lock braking was also optional but isn't fitted to this model. To me this car feels rather like a little Mercedes, it's not actually very nice to thrash and try and go quickly in. It's the complete opposite of that Daihatsu Sirian I used to own. I think part of that reason is the engine. It's a 1.6 litre Honda unit with a very long stroke. The stroke is much longer than the bore. It means it's got very good torque characteristics. Revving the engine just seems to make it noisy. It all seems a bit unnecessary. When you look on paper, the maximum torque figure is at 5,200 revs, which sounds ridiculous. But it must be a very level torque curve, because from 2,500 revs upwards, it pulls very nicely. Generally, I can keep it between 2,500 and 3,500 revs. It makes it very relaxing. You come to hills, and it just doesn't really seem to notice them. Steering is perhaps a little bit too light, but it's very direct, especially around the dead ahead, so it turns into corners very nicely indeed. Certainly a very refined car, we're here doing 60 and it's pretty much wafting along really. It is a little bit jiggly at times in terms of suspension and I blame that on the low profile tyres it wears, it's got optional alloy wheels on. Fifth gear in ratio terms feels very close to four. So you change into fifth, it's not an overdrive ratio by any means, it, the revs barely seem to drop. That's a bit disappointing really, I kind of think it would be a bit more relaxing at motorway speeds if it had slightly taller gearing. Oddly, the Rover 414, which uses the K-Series engine, has slightly taller gearing. It uses a Peugeot-derived gearbox, this has a Honda-derived gearbox. It's a lovely little gearbox to snick through, it's a lovely little lever, it's got a nice action to it. So you can drive it hard, but it goes against the feeling of the car overall really, it makes it loud and raucous. And it's better to just use the torque of the engine, keep the revs low. Actually it takes quite a long time for the engine revs to die down when you dip the clutch for a gear change. That takes a bit of getting used to. It's just no stress at all. I, I, I like the seats, they're very comfortable. It's just a car that you don't really have to think too much to drive. Even if you're driving quickly, it seems to have prodigious levels of grip. argued on my blog fairly recently that this was the best car Rover had built since the P6 and I stand by that. The P6 obviously triumphs it in pure engineering terms, spanking was absolutely marvellous, but the SD1 and even the Rover 800 that came after it, which was the first sort of big development with Honda, first time the two companies came together to build a car that was actually quite different from its Honda stablemate. The quality was never quite there with the Rover 800. The interior always felt just a bit flaky, which is a real shame. So, we're now approaching the national speed limit signs. I just put my foot down in fourth. There's been so many point downshifting. 
don't really get any power coming through until two and a half thousand revs. And then it's a very linear, very flat sort of power delivery all the way up to the red line. I wasn't expecting to like this car half as much as I actually do. It really does make me realise how good that Rover Honda partnership was. There's no way Rover could develop a car like this on its own. It makes the Maestro and Montego, well, frankly, seem a bit crap. As much as I love them. The Rover 200-400 and its Honda Concerto sibling were built alongside each other at the Longbridge production line in Birmingham. That tells you how good things have got, but actually Honda considered it acceptable for Rover to build their cars. And that's why the quality is so much higher. I'm driving along, there are no trim rattles, the sort of thing that a blighter Maestro Montego throughout its production life. I mean, it's almost serene. The fact that you can pick up a car like this for just 300 quid is frankly lunacy. Although you might have a quick look at this picture. That's what it looked like when I bought it. it looks a little bit different now, but I've still kept some of the stickers just because I like a car that stands out a bit, as you may well know. So there you have it, the Rover 400. A car which I didn't set out to buy, but one which I really do rather like. I know I end up liking every car, but that's kind of the person I am. This is actually a really good car though. It's got very nice engineering, it drives very nicely. And I'm certainly very glad I decided to get brave and pick this one. Until the next video, ta-da.